What's going on guys, welcome to another video. In today's video I'll be walking you guys through my current iPad desk setup. I understand that the previous iPad desk setup video I uploaded had some audio issues, which made it a little bit difficult to watch. So hopefully this updated version is a bit clearer and easier to watch. Ok so let's get into it. Ok so let's start by looking at what is on my desk. Nothing has changed too much since the previous desk setup video, however we do have some minor changes. So firstly I have my MacBook Air. The MacBook Air is essentially my main device which I use to complete most of my work on. I have had this MacBook for over a year now and it is still running as efficiently as day one. My initial worry when buying this MacBook was that the Air may not be able to handle the task that I wanted it to carry out. However the M1 handles everything without any problems. Of course if you was going to pick one up today you would have the M2 chip which I can only imagine would be even more efficient. Next I have a Dell monitor in the middle which I have hooked up to my MacBook. The monitor isn't anything too special however it is still very nice. In terms of specs it's pretty basic but I also didn't want to spend too much on it. Before buying the monitor I had no idea how much more efficient it is to work on a bigger display. I now struggle to work on anything but the monitor as I find that it's just not as productive when working on a smaller display. So if you are someone who is currently working on a monitor I highly recommend you consider picking up an external display. Like mine, it doesn't have to break the bank, these days you can get a solid monitor for a reasonable price. And then of course we have the iPad Pro with the magic keyboard. Since Apple introduced a new universal control feature, I've been able to use my iPad seamlessly with the rest of my setup. The universal control just works so effortlessly that I sometimes end up using it unintentionally. Like I'll just be dragging my cursor left and right and just end up on the iPad and then end up using it somehow. I think that the thing that stands out the most is the ability to control all three displays with whatever I want. What I mean by this is that I can choose to do everything using my Bluetooth, keyboard and mouse. I can do everything using my keyboard and trackpad on my MacBook or I can do everything I want on the Magic Keyboard. Everything just works without any hiccups. Most of the times I use my Bluetooth mouse and keyboard as they are in the centre of my setup. But occasionally I may want to use some gestures so I just simply reach over to the left and use the trackpad on my MacBook. To get the most out of your setup I suggest getting a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. Which brings me on to the next two peripherals I have on my desk. The Keychron K2 and the MX Master 3. I was kind of hesitant when buying the Keychron as it was kind of expensive for a keyboard. However, after using it for a few months now, I can say it was definitely worth the money. The fact that it's compatible with Apple devices and connects seamlessly makes using it super efficient and reliable. Also, the mechanical keys are super tactile and enjoyable to use. The keyboard also has 15 types of RGB light and has a battery which can last up to 240 hours. And then we have the mouse which is the Logitech MX Master 3. You've probably seen this mouse on every tech YouTuber's channel, the MX Master 3 is probably the most popular mouse available. The mouse is definitely on the more expensive side but when you use it as much as I do, it's definitely worth the investment. The ergonomic mouse is extremely comfortable to use on a daily basis for multiple hours a day. Ok so next we have a new addition to the desk setup, a 3-in-1 MagSafe charger. Probably one of my favourite recent purchases. Before grabbing this charger I was constantly struggling to charge all my devices at one time and I had cables all over my desk, however I don't have this issue anymore. With this charger I can charge my phone, watch and airpods all at the same time. Also I was impressed by how fast it charged my devices too. My previous experience with wireless charging has been that it takes forever to charge but this isn't the case with this charger. This charger also has a cooling system built into it which prevents the phone from overheating when wireless charging. So if you are someone who has all three devices, I definitely recommend checking out this MagSafe charger. Then we have some plants which I picked up from Ikea, a candle from Zara and a Samsung Bluetooth speaker. Also if anyone's interested, the desk mat is from Amazon. Ok so next let's take a look at exactly how I'd use my iPad in this setup. Up until Universal Control was introduced, I would simply connect my iPad to the monitor using a HDMI cable and then use it like that. However, this wasn't very productive or efficient as all this did was mirror my iPad screen onto the monitor. And I'd have to keep looking back and forth 
at my iPad screen and my monitor screen when tapping and swiping on the iPad. So there's no point having it connected to the external display in the first place. So a way to make this process more effective is either to use an external Bluetooth keyboard and mouse or use the Magic Keyboard. By connecting these peripherals to your iPad you no longer need to look at your iPad or tap and swipe on the screen, which means you can focus on your larger external display. However since Universal Control was introduced I completely changed the way I use my iPad on my desk. Before Apple released this feature I would use only my monitor as an external display which mirrored what was on my iPad. However now what I do is I connect my MacBook to the monitor, place my iPad on the side of my monitor and connect my keyboard and mouse. Now I essentially have a free screen setup which is pretty useful for us traders. So let me show you what I mean. So as you can see on the left I have my MacBook which I connect to the monitor in the middle using a HDMI cable and then on the right we have the iPad on the Magic Keyboard. And in front we have both a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Using the keyboard and mouse I can control everything that's going on. Or I can control everything using my trackpad in the laptop or I can control everything using the Magic Keyboard. Okay, so how exactly would you use this setup as a trader? So as a trader, I have my main chart and time frame in front of me on the largest display, which is the monitor. So for me, that would be a one hour chart. Here I'll be doing my main technical analysis and looking for my trade entries. As I've mentioned before, when carrying out technical analysis, it's extremely helpful if you use a larger display, as it allows you to see more price history and the overall trend of the market. This allows you to make better entries overall. Then on the right I have the iPad, and on the iPad I will have the same pair I'm looking at on my monitor, however I'll be looking at a smaller time frame. Looking at a smaller time frame on the iPad essentially allows me to see price and how price is behaving and allows me to assess if entries on the larger time frame are still valid. And then on the left I'll have up something which allows me to do my fundamental analysis. So what I like to have up is a Bloomberg livestream, as they pretty much cover everything that is going on in the market during the trading sessions. I think the best thing about this setup is the fact that if I need to leave my desk and maybe go out, I can just simply grab my iPad and still stay on top of everything. I don't need to disconnect any devices or remove any cables, I think this is why Apple will always be the best, they just make processes a lot easier and enjoyable for users. When it comes to iPadOS 16, I feel the only feature worth mentioning is Stage Manager. All the other updates are very minor and I don't really think anyone will even notice them or be using them much. When it comes to Stage Manager, I feel like they've tried to make the iPad more like a MacBook, which is interesting, but I just don't see where this feature would be useful to me. Stage Manager's main feature is that it helps multitasking and allows you to have multiple windows open at the same time. However, an iPad display is already small enough, so if you had multiple windows open all at the same time, it's going to become very difficult to see anything. I prefer using the iPad without Stage Manager as I can view apps in full screen and easily multitask between apps and the windows with gestures already built in. Unless you are using the iPad with an external display, this feature is very limited and to me a little bit counterproductive. Maybe I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section if you guys use Stage Manager and if you find it helpful. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.